Welcome along to another video presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and in this video we'll look at basic user operations in Small Business Server 2008. If you're planning to install, migrate and maintain Windows SharePoint, then we recommend you take a look at our SharePoint Operations Guide. More information can be found at www.wssops.com. So let's get started. So as you can see, I'm here at my SBS 2008 console on my server. To work with users, I simply select the Users and Groups tab up the top here, and you'll notice that this presents me with three sub-tabs, User, User Roles, Groups. At the moment, I'm working with a single user on my system, being the administrator that I created during the installation. Um, to work with this user, I simply select that user and you'll notice over here on the right hand side that the tasks provided for that user automatically are displayed. If I click off that user, you'll see that the tasks on the right changes automatically. Now I can also work on a user simply by selecting the user and right mouse clicking and you'll notice a context sensitive menu appears. So to create a new user, simply click in a blank area on the left and then select the task to add a new user account. This launches the wizard which will take me through the process of creating a user. So I enter my new users details and once I do the system will automatically prompt me for a username. I can pull down and select from a list that automatically is generated from the first and last names and if I want I can also overwrite that if required. I can put in a description for my user as well as a phone number. I can also select the role that my user will take. At the moment I only have three roles on my system which are the standard ones that come with SPS 2008, a standard user, network administrator and a standard user with admin link. So I'm just going to select standard user and go next. I'm now prompted to enter a password for this user. You'll notice that the password has to conform to complexity standards. I'm unable to proceed until my password does conform to these standards. Once I have done this, you'll see that both green ticks are highlighted. Now that I've done that, I simply select the Add User Account. The wizard will now commence the process and create the account, create shared folders, also create an email account, set quotas and send a welcome email to the user. On completion I'll be presented with a window. This window basically also now allows me to step into creating a new computer on my small business server for the user or to assign an existing one to that user. So I don't want to do that at this stage so I'll select finish. You'll now see on the left hand side my user is displayed. Again when I click on this user you'll see that the tasks for this user appear on the right hand side. To edit the properties of this account I simply select the task and I'll be presented with some general information which I can change. I can select their remote access whether they have access to remote web workplace or a VPN. I can select their email quotas and I can also choose whether I wish to enforce this. I can choose which computers this user is assigned to. I can set their folder quotas and the size of this quota as well as assign them groups and also assign them access via remote web workplace, internal website and Outlook web access. You'll also notice on the general tab that I'm able to disable the account or reset the password. So once I'm happy with any changes I hit OK. Again the task of resetting the account or disabling the account is also available on the task on the right hand side. If I want to remove this user from my system I simply select the user, select the task to remove the user account and then prompted whether I wish to delete the mailbox and the shared folders. I select yes to continue and this user is now removed from my system. 
If I click on the user roles tab, I'll see the three standard user roles that are currently on my small business server. Again, I can right mouse click on any of these, brings up context sensitive help. I can select edit user role so I can see what information is set for these sort of users. So for my standard user, you can see that they're allowing access to remote work workplace. They've got a standard email quota of two gig, also a folder quota of two gig, and they belong to the following groups and have access to the following websites. I can change any of this so that when I apply this template against a new user, those settings will be taken up. But for comparison, if I now look at my network administrator, I'll see that there are a number of differences. For example, they are also members of an, a significant number of additional SBS groups to a standard user. The final tab indicates both the email distribution groups and the security groups within Small Business Server. Again, to work with any of these groups, I simply select them and I can go edit the group properties over on the right hand side. In this case, I can change the email address to send information to all the users. I can also choose whether to allow this group to receive emails from outside the organisation and whether they are to be archived into a document library. So that concludes our look at the basic operations of a user on Small Business Server 2008. If you found this video beneficial, we would appreciate a donation via donation.ciaops.net.au. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to look at this video and encourage you to send me any feedback via director at ciaops.com. Also, keep up to date with what's happening in any new videos that become available with information on my blog, supportweb.ciaops.net.au forward slash blog. Thank you very much for watching.